Have you been watching videos on YouTube which talk about the negative connotations and impact of the changes to the terms and conditions that Trading212 has recently made? Or have you seen a video on YouTube which talks about the possible investigation that Trading212 might be under through the FCA? Then you need to watch this video because in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I still think that Trading212 is a solid company despite these negative videos which have been made and posted on YouTube which are causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt with people like you who may be investing through Trading212. Hello and welcome to The Nimble Nomad. My name is Arjun and this is the channel where we talk about money and investing. So in case you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as I'll make a lot of different content about money and investing. So the over the past couple of months, there have been a lot of different videos which have been made about speculatively about the negative connotations about trading to one to the terms and conditions that they've made changes to, as well as the lack of communication about onboarding of new customers, more specifically in the UK market. Now, this has been implied, quote unquote, by some of these YouTube channels that basically because trading to one to is not taking on new customers and there has been a lack of communication on progress that they definitely are up to some shady no good. Now, in my opinion, I think a lot of these YouTube videos which are doing that are highly speculative and they're quite baseless. So I think people are making these videos because it only promotes their YouTube channel and gets them views. And I think that's a really unfair way of basically making content, right? Because you're creating fear, uncertainty and doubt with people like me and you who have assets on trading 212. So in this video, I actually want to talk about some of the counter arguments and more rationalized view on why I think trading 212 is actually still a pretty solid company and a stable platform to invest, if, especially if you've got a lot of cash that you hold on one of their ISA accounts or invest accounts. So uh, before I actually proceed with this video, I actually want to clarify two very simple things and they actually set the context for a lot of the points that I'm going to talk about. One, actually, I am a customer of Trading212. I did switch providers earlier this year in terms of the ISA contributions that I would be making for this tax year. But I have had contributions in previous years which I've made to Trading212 and I continue to hold those assets on Trading212. And actually a significant proportion of my net worth and assets is actually on Trading212. So I actually have a net vested interest in ensuring that Trading212 does not go bust and actually continues to operate. The second point that I actually wanna make is like everybody else who has been making videos on YouTube claiming that Trading212 is doing X or Y or Z, I am just another random guy on the internet sharing my opinion in making this video. So please bear this in mind as I progress through. Okay, so the first point that a lot of these YouTube channels have talked about is the technological challenges that Trading212 had and the lack of information or their ability to take on new customers despite more than 10 months having passed, right? So just to set the context, right in January or February, Trading212 stopped taking on new customers and basically since then, they have not taken on any new customers in the UK. They have recently over the last couple of months opened up new customer registrations in the European markets, but the UK customer base continues to be stagnant from a new accounts uh, perspective. Now, having said that, a lot of these channels are actually talking about how Trading212 must be up to no good and there's something else going on in the background that they're not revealing to everybody else. And as customers, they absolutely demand to, to know that, know what it is. I think this is a really unfair ask and requirement. So think about it, right? If a company is facing operational challenges, which clearly Trading212 is in the fact that they've not been able to onboard new customers for whatever reason, why do they need to air their dirty laundry out in public when they've already had enough negative press and media about new account registrations being stopped? To cite this as an example, if you look at another company, another major company in the UK, which actually had to stop new account registrations, it was Ocado. So Ocado in June of 2020, actually stopped taking on new accounts and new customers for deliveries. And that actually made serious headlines. Now, despite them actually having opened up 
their uh, new accounts in 2021, they're still facing operational challenges. My point that I'm trying to make here with drawing a comparison with Ocado, even though they're in different industries, is that just because you are not able to service a specific, a new customer base, does not necessarily mean you're up to no good. There might be genuine operational reasons due to which they are not progressing with taking on new customers. Now, the fact that they're a regulated business means that they actually have to ensure that they are operationally resilient in order to be able to take on new customers as well. So the bottom line is, as long as you are a customer, right? If, if you have assets on Trading212 and you can continue to use the platform, get your dividends, buy and sell shares or whatever it is and deposit money, then I don't see why you should be, why people are complaining about it. The fact that people who want to register are not able to register actually proves to me that there is such a strong demand for Trading212 products and services that people actually want to get on board. That just shows the quality of the product and service. Now, I just want to clarify that I'm not, this video is not sponsored as well. I'm just making this off of my own accord. Okay, so the second point that I really want to talk about is how Trading212 might be potentially under the negative eye of uh, the FCA. So there's, there was a video which was recently made and published on YouTube which talked about uh, because Trading 212's operations are primarily operating outside of the UK jurisdiction and out of Bulgaria and they don't have material operations here in the UK, um, they basically have come under scrutiny through the FCA. Now, having done research for this video, I have not seen a single bit of published information either in the media or on the FCA's official website which actually talks about this, right? Which in all likelihood means that if at all, they are being whatever, like investigated, if that's the correct terminology, by the FCA, then it's probably a informal review that is being conducted. So yes, there are some data points to suggest that there have been some management changes in Trading 212's organization. So they've recruited a couple of directors in some very senior positions in the UK management, uh, which would suggest that they've had to make some changes. But in, in my view, right, if they are under quote unquote investigation by the FCA, then all likelihood Trading212 is actually doing the right thing by hiring all of these senior directors in uh, the UK to make sure that they comply with the FCA regulation. So in my opinion, that's actually a positive thing. I don't think people should view that as a negative view and start reacting and panicking just because somebody is talking about it in a negative way on the internet. So the third point, and this actually is a fact, is that Trading212 has not actually published their annual statement of accounts and they're actually late in filing them. Now, I don't actually know what the specific reason for this is and it is quite unusual for a regulated business to not do that. But having seen some of the data points that are available to me, so if I go back to the point that they've hired a couple of new directors and one of them actually is a new CFO in the UK, which is in the form of Phil Parsonson, is that I have a feeling that this is because that the new CFO is required to sign off on the statement of account. So the way these regulatory appointments actually work is that if you're a regulated person or at, acting as a company director, then you have typically regulatory authorities assigned to you, which are granted and approved by the regulator, such as the FCA. So if in this case, the statement of accounts, which is his regulatory um, authority, and he is the accountable person, then he will be the person that needs to sign off on it. Now, having said that, he literally joined in November. So I have a feeling that the delay in the publishing of the statement of accounts has something to do with his appointment. Now people may say, well, he's already hired and he's been there now for nearly a month. Why has it not been published? The way these regulatory requirements actually work is that you actually get hired, but there's a process through which you have to go through and get approved by the regulator. And only after that, is when you have the authority to do it. So I have a feeling it may be because of that delay. I am speculating, I am being clear, I am speculating, I don't actually have the inside information about this, but that could be one reason. So this is all I wanted to talk about. I'm just trying to counter all of these negative points which has been published. What I actually wanna leave you with is 
do not let some random guys on the internet making videos about trading 212 or x y and z influence you in a negative way think through things on your own fact check them on your own independently rather than just go and blindly watch somebody's youtube video uh, i hope this video helped you out i was trying to be a bit more balanced in this if it did please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video goodbye